Good morning. A few days ago, I had the privilege of sitting down and chatting to Matt Mullenweg, the co-founder of WordPress and the CEO of Automatic, the guys behind WordPress.com. It was a wide-ranging and fascinating chat about all things WordPress and all things AI and the intersection of those two things and what it means for us all. So I hope you find this one useful. I'll see you at the end for a quick catch-up. I was reading one of your blog posts from 2014 and you were talking about the four freedoms of WordPress and specifically you quoted William Gibson, which is the future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. <laughs> yeah. Which is like, it makes sense to me now. And I guess the first question is, do you think that's going to get worse with AI or better? Mm. I think there will be more... Uh... Yeah, more disparity in terms of like there will be people or societies or companies that embrace AI that will have a ton of upside. And yeah, the future is here. It's just not evenly distributed. You can think about it through culture and society as well. Like there's cultures that still don't use electricity in, in yeah. the world. You know, there's cultures that still don't use. So like... There's whatever innovation goes through things like electricity, like the steam engine, like antibiotics, like how does it disperse? And AI is one of these things that is a, a fund as fundamental as some of these other things I've mentioned. And civilizations that adopt it will uh, advance far faster than those that don't. And, and in terms of the open source question and and AI, do you see there's a it's clearly a good fit between WordPress and AI, but do you think there's a friction between WordPress and its open source nature and AI? Not at all. You know, WordPress has always been about collecting the best ideas from everywhere and bringing them together. You know, we don't care about, we're not trying to be first. We're not trying to say, get credit. We're not trying to say like, we, you know, anything. We're just like, what's the best? And take that idea of meritoc meritocracy bring yeah. all the best stuff together and try to uh, make it a product for our community. And I think that's very much inherent in the philosophy of the WordPress community is being open to good ideas coming from everywhere. You know, innovation, much like evolution, you know, happens randomly throughout the world. And you never know where uh, something is going to great come from. Maybe it, pops up in typo three or Drupal or Squarespace or like anyone who creates something great, like awesome. You discover something now let's, let's, let's clone that and like make it even better build on top of it. So specifically around WordPress in terms of there's going to be this huge wave of disruption probably heading our way in terms of whether you're a freelancer or an agency or a content producer or a website builder or an educator all of us are going to be impacted on this. I just I just wonder if you've got a sense of what that looks like for each of those. You see this wave coming. Do you, do you have a sense of what that looks like for each of those roles yet? That you I'm could so be confident about. Roles, right? Because you now have, I, I love the word co-pilot is, you know, coming up in mm -hmm. a lot of things. Like you now have like a co-pilot and assistant, uh, you know, 24-7 giga brain <laughs> that can help you yeah. accomplish whatever you want to accomplish and you can tap into that knowledge to write plugins to learn new things to be a personalized tutor to create courses like we still need to train our own neur neural networks right <laughs> so like yeah. like but now we have the assistance of these incredible tools much like you know information itself you know with the the Gutenberg printing press and other things, all of a sudden ideas could be spread in a way. It didn't have to be like person to person telling. We could print it, we could replicate it and see how that accelerated humanity. When we were exposed to the ideas, we could kind of download them into our mind and then like start playing with them. Now that's gonna, that's happening at a global scale. And that's why I think communication is really key. So the future of humanity, publishing is really key and commerce is key. So those three areas are ones that I'm very excited to see open source solutions exist for uh, the world. Yeah. And have you got any advice for, for businesses in terms of how to leverage it internally? Like, are you in automatic? Are you, have you put strategies in place for how that that's happening? Play with it, you know, 
So I would say that right now, these are, we're literally creating new tools, new life forms, maybe <laughs> new intelligences. Yeah. Like, so kind of like the first time someone created a wheel or someone created a magnifying glass or, you know, just play with it and see what you can do with it. Like humans have used tools throughout history to make ourselves more productive, or that's a plow or glasses or microscopes or telescopes, or, you know, we use these things to augment our understanding of, of the way the world works. And this is just a new tool. So uh, you got to become fluent with it, learn to use it. It's got its own kind of ways of working with it. Just like you learn to drive a car at one point and think about how that that unlocked for you, everyone who can drive, like now you can move at these great speeds and you can control it. And like, it's a huge responsibility. That's why we license it. That's why we train people. Uh, you could also kill someone with a car. You know, if you used it irresponsibly, you could hurt yourself or others. So we have these rules around it, but it's, it's a very powerful tool and it unlocked so much creativity and human expression. You know, think of transportation and families and everything that was unlocked by by cars this is a new tool so just think of it like that and do you see do you see this as the the most profound thing that's been invented in in your lifetime Ooh. i think i heard you say that on a podcast the other day is why i mentioned it i think it's good. up there with in my lifetime i put this up there with the internet itself okay yeah in terms of like definitely the internet connecting humanity has accelerated our our intellectual evolution so quickly, right? Because now memes can evolve and ideas can evolve faster than you know generations. You and I can be exposed to something, an idea like freedom, democracy, human rights, and like that can then change how we think about things. You can be exposed to the idea of open source and say like, oh, this is the way to build things, and that can change the course of your life. You can read one essay, and all of a sudden, like your brain is rewired. Cool. A, now, these large language models that have collected all the wisdom, all the intelligence of everything humans have produced so far and are presenting it back to us in ways that are interesting and novel, I think are pretty exciting. Are you using it day to day yourself a lot at the moment? Are you a, do, you, do you class yourself an AI native? So when you think of a task, yeah. do you reach for the old the old way of doing it, or are you now starting to think about AI as part of your daily workflow? I would like to use it more. Yeah. So I'm definitely subscribed to, you know, uh, open AI, GPT-4 and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, I love how it's now starting to be built into the tools I use, including like Gutenberg with Jetpack AI. So we're getting some things built in. So I think these are going to be embedded into a lot of different tools in ways that I'm pretty excited about. So it's not going to look just like ChatGPT. It's going to be embedded into every single application, including WordPress, including, you know, day one, your journaling software. How cool would it be for like a fully private, you know, running locally language model to run over your diary, your journal, which literally has your like your life in it. So if you've done the work to put your life into something like day one, now all of a sudden you can query that, you can talk to it, you can ask it things. When was the last time, you know, I saw James, uh, well, you know, have a conversation with your calendar. I think that's going to be a new form of interacting with our databases and computing that is going to be a uh, very generative and really enable, unlock a lot of productivity for people. And have you, you've been following the music, because you're a musician by, by nature, I think. Yeah. By so have you been following the, the progress in in music and some of the ethical quandaries around that as well which is is so cool i mean music itself uh you know when you think of it sheet music is source code it's instructions yeah. for how to execute a song how to recreate it over and over again sometimes it's pirated right like when i was in jazz there was this thing called the real book which was like an illicit copy of all the standards that would show like the tunes and the melodies and stuff, but it wasn't licensed because they couldn't get copyright clearance or something. So you had to buy it. Like I literally went to some guy's house and paid cash and got it in a paper bag. And <laughs> But this was essentially like we were trading source code, you know, source code for how to make good music. I really excited. I'm following what Grams is doing where she said, you know, anyone is allowed to use my voice. Mm -hmm. 
And if you make a hit, we'll share on the revenue. <laughs> yeah, That's pretty cool. I just heard something the other day where someone took a Billie Eilish song. Is it Billie Eilish, name of the artist? Yeah. Wow. Um, and did it in Frank Sinatra's voice. <laughs> and that was like, it gave me chills. You know, here was yeah. old blue eyes, literally someone who's not with us anymore. And, you know, that, that little growl, the way, like, and he was singing one of these Billie Eilish songs, which was a beautiful song and yeah. bring his kind of character to it. I was like, wow, that's interesting. Cool. <laughs> cool. <laughs> And art is always about remixing. Like every single artist is influenced by what's going on around them and what preceded them. Art is always a reflection of what came before. Yeah, I think music is fascinating. I think somebody did a McCartney song the other day and they 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 took a McCartney song from now and they took his 70-year-old voice and then they took his 20-year-old voice and people prefer the 20-year-old voice. So there's a, there's a question for artists yeah. around... You know, if you're if you're the Stones or, the, or McCartney, you could actually release an AI album, and nobody potentially would ever know about it. Who are we to constrict artists from expressing themselves? Yeah, you know? would yeah, you mind I, if you would you mind I, if you knew it was an AI artist and it was like an old dead jazz saxophonist? You know, these arguments happened when photography was invented. My goodness, people are not going to want to paint anymore. They're not going to learn to paint. Paintings aren't going to matter because now we can just like capture the scene. So if you look and study like the the history of technological change, every time there's been something like this, there's been a lot of worry. And what's always ended up happening is it's more of a yes and, you know, like, uh, sure, people are still painting and painting took, you know, since the advent of the camera, like, has taken some amazing twists and turns, you know? Yeah. We've had Picasso. We've had like so many things since like the invention of the camera. It didn't kill painting. Yeah, I think it'll, I think we'll have new art forms. I was playing with the Photoshop AI generative stuff the other day, which is, uh, which is incredible. Yeah. I think what happens is that people, we call things technology when they're new. And then we forget that it's technology when we've it's been around forever. Like we forget that glasses are technology. That was invented yeah. at that point and that was new. And yes, we were modding our bodies, contact lenses. Like, yes, we're modifying, we're bionic now. But guess what? It means you can see things sharper and we're correcting for stuff. So paper, the pencil, like all of these things were invented by someone at some point and then spread throughout society. If you did have a concern about AI, because there's lots of people prophesizing the death of humanity, I'm guessing you wouldn't buy into that theory at all i think we should study that very closely just like when we started to unlock the power of the atom and yeah. you know it can be used for nuclear power it could also be used for nuclear bombs so i think that with generative ai it could be used to create beautiful music it could also be used to spam everyone you know yeah so these tools can be used for good and bad just like every technology that came before it you know, the Gutenberg press could print the Bible. It could also print Mein Kampf or something, you yeah. know, so it's, they can be used for good and evil. So uh, that is up to us as humans <laughs> to, to really think about our principles, the world we want to live in, what are sort of like fundamental human rights that we consider important, that regardless of whatever technology is happening, we want to preserve and in fact enhance so that's why I dedicate my life to open source. It's like, okay, if I'm going to create, if I'm good at creating technology and software, I want all the software I make, like the work that I pour my you know, blood, sweat, and tears into to give to the world. I want to, that to make people more free, not less free. I want it to make society more open, not less open. I want to give people more autonomy and control over their lives. And that's why the four freedoms of the GPL are so important. It's like our constitution. It gives people rights, inalienable rights, rights that can never be taken away by me or anyone else. If I woke up tomorrow, you know, I someone hit my head and I became crazy or evil or something like that, WordPress would be fine. Y'all could fork it, you know, like <laughs> you could take all of the code, everything that's been created and make, you know, a not map press or whatever it is. If I were ever not a good leader, like, you know, the software could fork, the community could fork and those rights cannot be taken away. Even if, you know, 
I were no longer benevolent or a good leader or whatever. And that's, I think, really important. What's the most exciting application of AI that you've personally used so far? Oh, So the Jetpack AI stuff, I think is really fun. And we've got something there that we've launched with Seth Godin. This is live. So if you go to uh, seths.blog slash bot. So Seth, incredibly prolific writer, marketer, wise yep. guy, you know, I, he has a lot of wisdom. I think he's published over 3 million words in his life. We were able to feed that all into one of these language models. And we've launched a bot on his site, but you can like, like you or I getting access to Seth's time would be a really valuable thing, right? And he can't give that to 8 billion people. But now we can run it on a computer and take the 3 million plus words he's published over his lifetime, and you can ask it a question. And so we trained this bot, just as we were doing it, we trained it on like the WordPress support docs, we trained it on my blog, we created a bot off Tim Ferriss's transcripts and blogs and everything. And it was kind of fun to ask the same question to these different bots, these different avatars of, you know, everything I've published, everything WordPress, is, you know, and I think I asked the question, like, I want to grow my sites. Uh, how do I do it? <laughs> you know, question someone might have, they started launching something yeah. new, I want to get more traffic. And it was really fun. Like the, the WordPress support docs was like, install this plugin, you know, make sure you you know, do have good SEO and clean markup so search engines can read it and like make your site accessible. The Matt one said, use WordPress, I think. <laughs> Seth, <laughs> Seth Bot talked about, um, you know, have a unique story, you know, tell your, <laughs> what's your purple cow? What's your like sort of thing that's like unique to the world that people will be the path to your door. And then the Tim one was like all about like optimization and hacking. Like here's how you test out different headlines. <laughs> it was pretty cool to see like different, sort of avatars of wisdom and like imagine gosh if i was an entrepreneur starting today you know 19 year old matt starting wordpress having access 24 7 to a conversational dialectic of you know these bots trained on people's data it's pretty amazing and cool and that's kind of yeah. what chat gpt is it's read all of it's, by the way it's already consumed all of these things i just mentioned it's just not kind of tuned to speak as it but you can ask it to you could say, hey, talk to me. It's actually a, a fun prompt engineering hack is to actually say like, okay, pretend you're a council of six people. You're Richard Feynman, Einstein, Seth Godin, Matt Mullenweg, but, but you know, pick your six people. I'm, I'm facing this problem. Uh, write a script where they debate this problem I'm facing. Uh, it's a very fun thing to do with these LLMs. And you get sort of the wisdom of like, here's what Richard Feynman would say. Here's what Einstein would say. Here's what Steve Jobs would say. Like, you can, what a gift, you know? And also what an amazing thing, amazing reward to anyone who's been blogging and publishing. Now, all of their thoughts and words, everything in their neural network can now be accessed in a different way. In terms of how you think it might affect I guess the broader scope of websites and the, the search experience that we're going to, well, we're starting to see with things like the browsers starting to show AI or AI as the search interface. Do you think that's going to have an impact on how the sort of search and content market works going forward? And how does that affect WordPress going forward as well, I guess? People still care about brands. They still care about other people. We still live in a world that's embodied. So like, I don't think these things go away or become less important. Yeah, I'm not sure how that all plays out. Yeah. Like, and definitely, I, hopefully these models can incorporate a way, like we figure out a way to fractionalize the economics or the subscriptions. So like, you know, imagine that I'm asking ChatGPT to tell me what Seth Godin would say. Maybe it can like put a little cryptocurrency to Seth Godin, you know, <laughs> as it does that, you know, and like... Uh, or whatever that value is that I'm paying is now some portion of that's going back to uh, being fractionalized to the creators or what it drew upon to uh, answer that question. And uh, with our current systems around like payment systems and other things, that's hard. I think it's not possible. 
you can see in the music industry around licensing rights, mm. who wrote the song, who performed it, what's the recording rights, there's all performance rights and merchandise rights. As we've kind of created legal systems and everything's to fractionalize and sort of chop up various parts of intellectual property and say how things should be rewarded or not. And that's going to need to evolve much in the same way that like, you know, when you could only get music from live musicians and then it could be on radio and then it could be pre-recorded and then it could be streamed digitally. Like, you know, we had to evolve the business models and all those sorts of things. Everyone wants music. Everyone wants musicians to get paid. <laughs> yeah. So, but at various points in that journey, sometimes the actual people making the music had more power. Sometimes they had less power. Sometimes there were a lot of middlemen taking all the value and the actual musicians weren't getting a lot. So again, I want all the tools I contribute to, to give more autonomy and freedom to the creators. In terms of how you organize internally, do you think that AI is going to, because of the speed that it's going to develop, do you think that organizational structures, so if you look at automatic or the way that WordPress open source currently works, do you think those are going to need to change or do you think those are ready for the pace of innovation that's coming our way? Mm. I mean, every organizational structure is just a series of trade-offs and you're choosing certain trade-offs with how you organize yourself. You know, whether it's a flat structure, whether you have teams and hierarchy, you're functionally organized or divisionally organized. Or So I think that the most important impact is going to be at the individual level. So individuals should all be thinking about how they can use AI to augment their productivity to make them better, whether that's through learning or through enhancing their work outputs or increasing their productivity. Yeah, how to use these new tools, just like we learned how to type at some point and we learned how to use computers. Like, gosh, how much did that unlock? How to use spreadsheets. And then for organizations, you know, people are still people. So I think there's end of the day, communication is important, trust is important, integrity is important. Those don't change because of these new tools. And so I don't know if institutions definitely new, do need to evolve. And many of our institutions are ossified in the way they work. You know, they do something because that's how it, it worked before and they were successful. Actually, success is the most dangerous thing because it makes it yeah. harder to know when it's time to change, take a different approach. Uh, but you know, I, I, I remain optimistic, you know, either, either you adapt or you're replaced by something that adapted. So a huge thank you to Matt for his time. I thought it was a really fascinating discussion that went into lots of really, really interesting areas around WordPress and AI. The key takeaway for me was just how optimistic he is that these new tools are going to give us all sorts of new creative freedoms. I am currently lining up some other videos about AI with some other thought leaders in this space, so subscribe if you want to keep track of those. And if you like this video, if you can hit the like button down below now, it would be amazing because it really, 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 really does help spread the word of the video, 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 video. And every time you do hit that like button, our cats get a little treat. Thank you again for watching. Keep well and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.